Are you looking for a way to use APIs but a website doesn't offer them? If that's the case, in this video I'm going to show you how to use hidden APIs or how to find hidden APIs to make the right requests, which means that you don't need to pay for either additional API costs or even if the site does not offer any APIs, you figure out how to get to them yourself. In the example I'm going to show you, I'm going to be using Gamma.f, which is a popular PowerPoint or slide making app that doesn't offer public APIs. And in a previous video, I covered this tool. And this was a common question. Does this tool actually have an API? The thing is that it doesn't. Or the correct way of saying it is they do not offer a public-facing API, which doesn't mean that there are no API calls actually happening. So let me get into the video and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here I am in Gamma. And as you can see, this is a simple slideshow with one slide and over here I have wherever I like whatever or the place where I put my inputs I have my prompts here I have my style I have a custom style it's in landscape and I'm using the ideogram and there are different models as well that you can use so let's actually hit generate and see what happens so when I hit generate this starts loading it takes all my inputs right here and in a few seconds, it will create three images for me. All right. So I know that there is input. So I know there is input. I know that there is some processing happening. And I know that there is an output that comes out on the other side. So what I'm really interested in is this exact moment. So when I press the generate button, what does actually happen? Because if I can capture things that happen at this stage, and then I capture the things that happen right here as well, at that moment where I get the outputs right here, then I can really grab whatever happens in between. So, that is the question that we are dealing with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here. I'm going to inspect and I'm going to go to my network tab. I'm also going to refresh this. So you will see all the requests that this page is making. So I'm click on that. Okay, make sure to make this smaller. I'm going to change the view. So I'm back on desktop. And sorry, let's refresh that. Because what I want to do is be able to see the requests that are happening. So if I double click on that, I get the menu as it was before. So now I can go back to network. I can kind of resize this a little bit. And I'm going to press this button to clear everything on this page. Because I want that as soon as I press the generate button, I see everything that is happening on this page. So let me clear that. It will start recording and I'm going to hit generate. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff happening. There's a generate, generate, which immediately should kind of snap you into thinking that this might be the API that is being used. And then I'm getting more stuff back as these images were displayed. So this is essentially what I was showing earlier in the sense that when I pressed the generate button, stuff was happening. And then this is what I'm interested in as a second thing. And this is what I'm interested in as the first thing. So let's go back to this. So let's look at this generate part right here. And here you can see that there is this request URL, which is api.gamma.app slash media slash images slash generate. The request method is options. And there is a bunch of stuff right here. Let's look at generate. I also have different payloads here, which is something that I will need to use because I can see that the context is a document. 
count equals three. So presumably this is how many images are to be returned. There's the doc ID, the fallback model, height model, negative prompt, the actual prompt. As you can see, this is my prompt right here, thumbnail design idea, text on thumbnail. Style is preset, or rather style preset is custom, prompt is cinematic prompt, width and workspace. So what I'm going to do here is actually try this out and see what happens. So if I go to my email.com, here I have a fresh like new scenario. I'm going to copy this request URL. I'm going to go here. I'm going to look at the HTTP module. Then I'm going to look at make a request. I'm going to paste in my URL. And here there's also a bunch of other stuff that is very important. I'll probably have to get to it in a second. But also here, I can look at this in different ways, at this payload in different ways. I can view it as the source, as parsed. What I'm interested in would be as parsed. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go back to make. I'm going to choose raw. Content type is generally JSON. And I'm going to paste all this in. And I'm just going to hit OK and see what happens. And generally, this wouldn't work because cannot get something is not found. Okay. Let's go back to headers. This needs to be changed to post. So this is the first thing. The method needs to be changed to post. I'm going to hit OK and try again. Now, I get this message, 401 not or unauthorized, which makes sense because it doesn't make sense that anyone with this URL and this request content. content is able to make a request. So what I am going to try next is here there are a bunch of response headers or rather I'm looking at our request headers. There's authority, there's method, there's pod, there's scheme. Generally you wouldn't really need all of them. What you would need is this cookie right here because this shows the app. So in this case, gamma.app that it is you that is making the right request. So all you would do is copy that and go back here. I go to my make a request. I add a header called cookie. And I just paste in my cookie itself, which is a long string of text. For the sake of this video, I'm going to paste it in and then remove this part. But what I will say, or actually let me just do this. So I'm going to, so I wouldn't have to edit this afterwards. So all I'm going to do is add a variable called cookie and I'll take this off screen and paste in my cookie. And now I can just refresh this and just reference this cookie. So like this, I wouldn't have to make any edits afterwards. So I go back here and now I can paste in that value. So in this case, you would just replace your own cookie from your own Gamma account. And now I'm trying it, this again. So this hasn't crashed out yet, which is generally a good thing. I'm just waiting to see what happens. And now, if I look at data, you will see that there's a bunch of stuff, which is kind of my bad because I didn't parse the request. But if I look here, there's ID, user, workspace, there is this SRC, which is generally a way to refer to images. So if I could. And I also notice, I saw somewhere that there are multiple SRCs. And as you can see, there are three different SRCs, which are referring to the three different images. So this seems to have worked. It seems to have generated the actual stuff that I wanted. What I will double check as well. Let me just close this. If I refresh this, I should also have three new images that were generated. So let's keep this in mind. There's this It's All Connected, new features unlocked, and there are four rows of It's All Connected. If I refresh, I'm expecting to have five rows because it will have generated another row on top. Let's have a look here. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So that generated these three images. 
the one I just showed you and two more. But now you might tell me, okay, I don't want to have it so connected as my image, right? Which makes total sense. So I'm going to do two changes. I'm going to hit parse response here. So we don't get this bunch of stuff right here. And what I'm going to look at is this prompt right here. So instead of thumbnail design idea, la la la. I want, let me just confirm what my prompt was. So the last word was automation. So all I need to do is grab that stuff. And enter my own prompt. I'm going to do something similar as I did here. I'm going to clone this. Obviously, you can include it in the same module. Yeah, so much for not showing that. Anyway, whatever. Let me just add an item here. I mean, it's still... Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm going to add a prompt here. So here I'm going to say dog sleeping. Hit save. And now, if I go back here, instead of double X or triple X, I can just say, oops, the prompt right there. So now if I run this once again, if this works well, I should get two images of a dog sleeping. So let's have a look. And if I look at the data here, I get three, an area with three collections. If I open them up, there should be an SRC tag, which is this. So let's open that. So it's under ATTRS. Let's open that. And let's open that again. So now I get one dog, two dogs, three dogs. Perfect. It's using the engine that, I'm, that I chose, which would be Flux. So one of these should... Data... Yeah, provider is Flux. Awesome. And also, if I go back here and refresh, I should also see the three images that were just generated. Yep. So that refreshed and showed me the three images. So just like this, in make.com, I was able to understand how to grab the hidden API or actually use it and make my own requests. Now, obviously, you still need to have an account, right? But the thing is that many platforms will charge you extra for their API. Many platforms even block certain requests. So like this is a quick way to test the API yourself, see if you can make it work. And then obviously once you are here and you have the three images themselves, you can do whatever you want with them. So just to wrap this up, Let's say that I have an Airtable. Let me just create a quick Airtable database. Create, scratch. So here I just created an Airtable database. And let's say that here I want to have prompt. So that, that would be the prompt that I used. And I just want to save the images right here. So I would have image one, which is an attachment. Duplicate, duplicate. Let's call this image two. Let's call that image number three. Save. I can delete this stuff. And now I can go to my Airtable. I can create a report. And in my untitled base, I can do the following. So choose the table. I'm going to add the three images. So image three is under data. ATTRS and under SRC. Now what you will see here is there are these square brackets. So for this one, I'm going to choose data three because it's in the third element of the area. I'm going to do the same for this. So just choose two. And do the same for this and just choose one. And finally, for the prompt, I'm going to have a look. Actually, it's just this dog sleeping, right? So I'm going to hit OK. Save. And let's try this again with something else. So sunny day on a 
you know, um, sunny day in Malta. Sun is out, birds are singing, and life is good. Sounds like a good prompt. Hit the hit run once, and if this works, in a few seconds, I should get a new row here with the prompt that I just gave, and the three images, boom, 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 saved right here. So let's see if this will work. Creating record that saved the prompt. Oops. And the three images right there. So just like that, I'm connecting, I'm using me.com to connect gamma.app, access their hidden APIs, and save the images to Airtable. So then I can come here and do whatever I want to do with these images. And that's pretty much it. This looks very real. Could be. I like how this is blurred in the background. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is how to do just that. If you love this video, let me know in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe so you don't miss future ones. And in the meantime, check out the link in the description. So I can show you how to use AI and automation in your business as well. I'll speak to you soon.